The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Has this ever happened to you? You grab your iron, heat it up, and find that solder just won't stick? With proper tip maintenance, this will never happen to you. Okay, it can still happen, but we can help prevent it. Hello, my name is James and welcome to Workbench Wednesdays, where we review tools for your electronics workbench. This video finishes the series on soldering tools provided by Weller. With help from some familiar faces, we're going to talk about five tips for your soldering iron tips. First question comes from Matthew Ergel. He's done a couple of cool projects on Element 14 Presents, including one of my favorites, which is an Altair replica. Let's see what he asks. So James, I got a question here. Um, yeah, I got this soldering iron tip and it's all kinds of chewed up with something, um, presumably oxidation. Um, <laughs> so I was kind of wondering, should I be changing my soldering tips or you know, do they just last forever, right? Wow, that is a great question to start our discussion. A huge misconception I think people have about soldering irons is that their tips last forever. However, they do wear out. As Matt points out, oxidation or oxidation is one of the things that limits the life of the tip. Even though we call them soldering irons, the core of the tip is not iron, it is copper. While copper is a great thermal conductor, it is rather soft and dissolves easily. Let's step back a second. In the last soldering video, we talked about the metals that make up solder. One of the key ingredients is tin. What happens when you combine tin and copper? You end up with an alloy called bronze. So there is an iron plating on the copper to protect it from the tin. Now let's talk about that iron. What is it famous for? Ferric oxide, AKA rust which means iron has the issue of oxidation, which is what Matt mentioned. As a tip oxidizes, bits of the iron plating are lost. Eventually the copper becomes exposed and tip damage occurs. As long as you properly tin your tips, they will last a very long time. Now, regardless of the brand of iron or tips you're using, eventually the tip will wear out. So please consider them a consumable. Now, in addition to keeping them tinned, it is also necessary to keep them clean which is what brings us to a question from Clem Myers of Myers Makes. In fact, I mentioned Clem in an earlier video because he did a project called a macroscopic soldering camera. Let's see what he asks. Hey James, is it better a Nassenschwamm to verwenden or eins von diesen messing dingern? I think I left it in German. Hi James, I was wondering, is it better to use a wet sponge or these brass sponges to clean my soldering iron tip? I'm really glad that Clem asked about the wet and dry cleaning. One of the things I noticed when I received my Weller equipment is that all of the safety rest included a brass sponge. There were no wet sponges on the WX series, while the WE1010 that I already owned did come with a wet sponge. So I think Clem is onto something. Why are there two types and when should we use them? Like before, I want to start with some misconceptions. Some people avoid the dry or brass sponge because they are worried about scratching the plating on their tip. And as we talked about, we really need to protect that iron plating. One reason I think this misconception exists is that some people have used steel wool to clean their soldering iron tips in the past. Let me be clear. Neither steel wool or sandpaper or a Dremel are good options to clean your tips. Wait, what did I say? Here's the thing. Brass is an alloy of copper and zinc, which are both softer metals than iron. So with gentle pressure, the brass will not damage the iron plating. Going to the other extreme, some people avoid the wet sponge because they're afraid the rapid temperature change from the moisture will cause damage to their tips and it can. When the plating becomes cracked, then the temperature change will accelerate damage to the tip. Of course, at that point, the tip is already damaged anyway. 
So if you're going to use a wet sponge, let's keep a couple of things in mind. Don't use the type of sponge you might find in your kitchen. It can't withstand the heat and the antibacterial agents will just contaminate the tip. Second, only use distilled or deionized water on the sponge. Tap water contains minerals and other contaminants, which will just cause more tip wear. When cleaning the tip, give the tip time to heat back up and burn off the moisture before using it. Let's take Weller as an example. They ship both wet and dry sponges with their soldering stations. So which one is better? Well, let's look at who these are targeted at. The entry level targets people new to soldering like hobbyists and students. Those users tend to use solder with lead. Lead solder means less aggressive flux and lower temperatures. So the stress of the sponge isn't as extreme. Also, sponges are really cheap. While the WX series is targeting professional users who will probably be using lead-free solder. In general, lead-free solder has more aggressive fluxes and operates at higher temperatures. The brass sponge doesn't cause the rapid temperature changes and so is less stressful on the tip. Also, brass sponges will last a much longer time than the wet style. In order to show you heavy oxidation, I left my iron on at 450 degrees Celsius for eight hours. From the factory, the Weller stations have an auto off timer. In my case, I set it to four hours just in case I forgot it was on and then woke it up. I did think it was interesting that they do let you set a timeout of 999 minutes. To clean this tip, I'll use both methods. First, I wipe it with the brass sponge and we can see that some of the oxidation is removed. Next, I'll use the wet sponge to try and get a bit more off. And that's looking pretty good, but I think we can do more. Coating the tip with some rosin activated solder helps remove more contamination with additional wipes. For me, I don't usually use a wet sponge anymore. The brass sponge and some rosin solder are usually enough to clean my tips. But in the past, I did use the wet sponge anytime that wasn't enough. Which brings us to a question from David Edwards. Hi James. I'm always finding that my soldering tips are just tarnished and horrible. Is there anything I can do to rescue them? I'm going to guess that David has already tried both the wet and dry sponges, so what can he do next? Well, there are two options. The first is a small container of something called tip activator. This material is tin and aggressive flux in a solid-ish form. Dipping your soldering iron into it will clean most of the oxidation off and leave you with a nice tinned tip. You might be thinking, well, this stuff cleans and tins your tip, so could I or should I use this every time I solder? And the answer is no, that would be a big mistake. This material is aggressive. It will wear down your tip's iron plating. Now, as oxidation builds up, Yes, absolutely, use this to remove and maintain your tip. After all, a cleaner tip will require less heat to operate efficiently. However, to use it every time you solder will actually shorten the life of your tip. It's kind of weird that this stuff can both extend and shorten the life of your tip, right? Anyway, let's say that this stuff isn't cleaning something that's really stubborn. Before you toss it out, check out this Polish bar from Weller. Wait a second. Uh, oh, sorry, I think it's Polish Bar. Oops. When nothing else works, give this bar a try. It scrubs away stubborn contamination. If you go down this route, know two things. First, you must let the tip cool to room temperature, and you need to tin it immediately after using the bar. Obviously, this is the most aggressive step, so it should only be your last resort for what would be otherwise a ruined tip. So let's say you take care of your tips or rescue them after some neglect. That might lead you to our next question, which comes from Adam Swallow. Hey James, I just bought a new Weller solder and iron. And I bought a bunch of tips for it, but I just don't know, how do I decide which tip to use? Hey Adam, congrats on your new iron. And that's an interesting looking project that you're working on. Well, different tips are useful for different applications. So I'll cover three major types. The chisel tip is my favorite. It is shaped like a chisel. It easily delivers heat to pads and pins while you apply solder. This tip is my go-to for general purpose work. In fact, I like to have a couple different sizes of this style for different work pieces. Similar to the chisel is a screwdriver type. And at a glance, they probably look about the same. Personally, I only keep the chisel type in my kit. 
For precision work like surface mount parts or hard to reach places, I use a conical or cone shape. The really small tip does present a challenge though because it does not quickly deliver large amounts of heat. For small surface mount, this behavior is good, but for general purpose soldering, you'll probably become frustrated. Also, I'd like to point out that my experience has been that these conical types tend to quickly lose their iron coating at that sharp tip. So take extra special care to clean and tend these as you use them. Last are these slope tips, which have a few names. You might hear them called sloped, bevel, or hoof. These tips have a large flat surface on one side of the tip that can hold a blob of solder. This blob is useful for when you're dragging across pins of a fine pitched surface mount chip. There are many other types like knife or gull wing, round, and the screwdriver type that I talked about earlier. To me, these are variations on those three. Plus, there are variants on those like a bent tip. My suggestion is that you start with the first three types. If you find yourself using one of those more than the others, then look at the variants to see if any of those can help with your particular work. If you're like Adam and your soldering station is new, then I recommend ordering a new tip every time you buy parts online to help build up a collection. Related to changing tools, let's check out this question from Dave Pluger. Yesterday, I was hand soldering this board with my soldering iron, but for the crystal, I had to switch to the hot air soldering station. For the USB socket, I wanted to change back to the soldering iron again. Should I turn off my soldering iron while I use my hot air station, or can I just leave it on? Let's take Dave's question and combine what we've learned so far. We know that heat contributes to oxidation, and that's bad. When talking about the wet sponge, I mentioned temperature cycling can make cracks or scratches in the iron plating worse. So what do we do in Dave's case where you're going to leave an iron idle for a few minutes? Well, you have to decide between a trade-off. Leaving the iron on unused means oxidizing the tip, while letting it cool down means thermal stresses. So what can we do? Let's look at the WX series station for a bit of a clue. In addition to the auto off timer, there is also a standby timer. Standby temperatures offer several benefits. The tip oxidizes less since it is held at a lower temperature and heats up quickly because it isn't cooled all the way down to room temp. The middle temperature also means that there's less cycling stress. I think it makes sense to reduce the temperature while idle instead of going completely cold. If your station doesn't have a standby temp built in, then you can do the same thing manually. Somehow I suspect others might have a different opinion about this answer or some of the others. If so, head over to Element 14 so that we can start a discussion about them. As this series comes to a close, I need to give a few shout outs. First, I appreciate Weller and Element 14 for sending me the equipment to cover in this series. It worked out great for me because it got me through a bunch of projects I'd been meaning to work on. For you, I hope you saw some interesting tools and things to consider for your workbench. In the show notes for all of these soldering episodes, I've included links to the Weller products and supplies shown in the videos. If you have questions, feel free to ask me over there and I'll do my best to point you in the right direction. Next, I'd like to extend a huge thank you to Element 14's team of video content producers. I gave them very short notice to send me the clips and I think they did amazing. Please check them out and their content by visiting the show notes for this episode. We'll put a link on screen and in the description if you're not already over there. Last, of course, is thank you to everyone watching. Many of you contacted me on Element 14 with questions and tips to add. I love hearing from you, so please continue to say hi. As for now, it is time for me to get back to my workbench. Mm -hmm.